Welcome to tutorial 16 of our series using the kinship blocks. I have here blocks 61 to 64 and the design that we're going to be doing today uh, is also an all over design. can be used in a slightly different way which I'll get into in a little bit. Uh, we're going to call this one towards the centre and uh, yes it will be focusing on the centre of a block um, and even on our rectangular blocks. So I'll just grab my piece of paper and we will do some drawing. So let me zoom in so that you can see nicely. Get rid of this one. All right, let's draw our square block and our rectangular block. Okay, so if this was our center, what is our center? Uh, we are going to, it doesn't matter which corner you start in, we will need to start and stop for each of these. Um, you may be able to travel around your uh, unit of four blocks, uh, but it won't matter if you can't. So what I would do is I'm going to divide each of these sides into three with these registration marks. So we also have a point at the corner and uh, so we're going to start in one of these corners and we are going to go in a wavy line and then back again. To get to our next point, you could do another wavy line and then echo back. Wavy line, wavy line to the center. So this one hasn't gone all the way to the center because I've got lots more points that I need to get into the center as well. So we're echoing our line That one was a little bit further away. So the lines are supposed to echo each other towards that center. For our rectangular block, we can do the same thing. Just divide the shorter sides by one instead of two. And these will be shorter because they are closer. Now how much wave you put in these is entirely up to you. The idea is that whatever wave you quilt in, you echo back out again. And that creates a very cool effect across your block. In, if you are confident, you can stitch to your seam line and stitch in the ditch to the next one. I actually quite like this uh, fluted effect that it gives uh, by doing a wavy line at the outside. It also means that it's slightly easier uh, not to have to stay in the ditch of your block. So you're actually adding a bit of a feature there as well. Now what I want to um, say when you've got, um, I know some people when they're making it they've been doing some fussy cutting. So, um, we'll do another one here. Say you've got, um, let's just pretend, in one of these blocks here, I have uh, a fussy cut piece that I don't necessarily want to quilt over. Um, so this is uh, whichever block it is, um, 64 I think, or 63. So say this one has a feature in it and I don't want to quilt over that feature because it's a fussy cut. So if you don't want to do that, I'm just going to quickly draw in some piecing lines into this block on the edge of the fabric here. And say this one here, I don't want to quilt over. So you could give yourself a bit of a registration line that you don't quilt past or into that circle. You can still quilt the same design, uh, it might be there and there, 
that would probably be easier. All right, let's start in this corner and we quilt to the edge of it. We might have to keep quilting slightly. And so you've basically left that one unquilted uh, and you can then show up because it's unquilted it will show up more as a feature in your block all right let's move to the sewing machine all right so i've got my uh, practice blocks in here you can see i've marked the center of my block this is block 62 because i'm keeping with the uh, arrangement that i started with you can see I've got registration marks on the sides of my block that indicate where I do my uh, quilting towards the center. So I am going to start at the side here. I've done my locking stitches. I have a contrast thread so you'll be able to see. And I'm going to do a wavy line to this first one. Now I want to leave a bit of a gap when I get to the back so I'm not going exactly to it. We come to a point in here and then I'm following it back out again. Like so. Now we're going to do another wavy line along the edge. back out again so when I get to this point I'm then watching the, my previous quilting line so that I can stitch back out quilt into that corner and then get rid of that now each time I, I do find it easier to quilt towards me so if that's easier for you then do that moving my hands not too fast but keeping my machine going fast oh, let's just tilt you up a little bit so it will bring you a bit closer so watching my previous stitching line means that I can follow it back out again it doesn't matter if your wavy lines at the side are the same each time I've got a little bit closer in the middle there. I guess a way to sort of change this up a bit would be to change how wide your echo is. And you like might like to have that gap a little bit wider than I have. A little bit like I did just there. All right, let's see. had some very gentle waves. I think I like it when the waves are a bit more pronounced. And I'm still coming in apart when I get back to where I started there towards the center. I'm leaving that gap there.
So this is a great one for stopping and starting. You've got plenty of opportunity to reposition your hands. And I think it looks it's a great visual. Notice that when I'm quilting backwards I'm going quite a bit slower because I'm making sure that I follow my, uh, my previous quilting line. First block of towards the center. Oh, I think I'm liking this one. All right, onto one of our rectangular blocks. Just making sure my fabric is all smooth. And I've done my locking stitches. So this one I didn't need to mark a, a central um, registration mark because the piecing uh, does that for me. side now these ones will be a little bit shorter because our block is rectangular so much quicker of the unit out of the way so I can hold my hands last thing I want to do is get that caught all right so we're getting to the bottom of the block and again the piecing is my registration line get in a bit of a rhythm where you can quilt inwards follow it back out again quilt on to the next oh, point rectangular block 
This is block 64, so lots of triangles on this one, so it will actually be interesting to see. When I do this on the coloured one, how that looks. Trying to make sure I maintain this curve, you know, all the curvy features of this design because I think it certainly adds to the fun of the design. Remembering when I get to about here, I'm heading separate to where I started to create that part of the design. good so this is block 63 and this is the one where I've drawn myself a circle I'm pretending there is a fussy cut feature in this fabric and I don't want to quilt over it so my center changes from say here in the block to here I won't use that pen because that's a pen so if this is what would be the center of my block then each of my lines does change uh, that good old perspective drawing that we might have done at school uh, so I can draw myself some lines here and uh, you can see whilst this one I probably won't even quilt I will just quilt along to the side and then keep going um, 
my my whole center of um, I don't know what the word is but my perspective point changes to here rather than here so everything will be slightly different so let's see how it looks I've done my locking stitches I'm aiming for here but I'm only going to quilt to here down the side and get rid of it now This one, I do have to travel a little bit further. Not too much, and that would, I guess, depend on where your feature fabric was in your block.
So here we have the completed towards the center blocks. I really quite like the effect of this design and I hope you give it a go. Uh, so we've uh, basically created lots of wavy triangles. Uh, we have one here where we're highlighting perhaps a fussy cut piece. I didn't do that in the colored blocks. And one thing I will say is that uh, my colored blocks, just move that aside, you can see very little of this design, but I know it's there and you can see it on this solid and a bit on this fabric here. Now, I will say when I was quilting on this green, it's actually really challenging to see uh, where I'd been uh, and to follow it back. So depending on, on your fabric, you may need to turn around and uh, you know turn your block around and actually sew a quilt forwards. So you can see on the back that design and uh, but you can see all that I've created on the front is some texture but if this was across your whole quilt now depending on your fabrics this may be a great design you might like to choose this uh, if you're using say Halloween fabric uh, or a spider fabric it certainly would be an option for that so we'll do some close-up photos and uh, show you those but i hope you'll have a go and uh, enjoy your quilting <laughs> 